Listen Up with Jim Potts. Listen Up, business owners, CFOs, human resource managers, and all managers and supervisors. Jim Potts is answering and addressing your questions and concerns, helping you stay out of court. Furthermore, please be advised that Jim's answers are not legal advice and are only intended as a guide based on his years of experience. The phone lines are open, 1-855-4-J-POTS. That's 1-855-457-6887. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Ready to listen up? Here is Jim Potts. Jim Potts, back on the air. Well, I told you, you know, I, I got a little political last time. And, of course, we got all those emails and everything from all those folks out there that are offering different opinions about, uh, you know, uh, the Republicans versus the uh, Democrats. But I'm not getting into all of that right at the moment. Um, I threw a shout out to President Obama because of uh, he finally did something on behalf of uh, employers. And, uh, you know, well. You know, again, it's political, but I did what I did and I stand by it. But anyway, listen, here's what we've got going on today. They, there's, there's one state out there that's doing an amended medical marijuana bill. And that bill is going to offer employers higher protections uh, regarding the use of marijuana. Now, you know, over the, over the years that I've been doing this podcast, I've talked about the, um, about marijuana and the legalization about marijuana, et cetera. And, you know, this business about legalized marijuana and this thing is drifting in uh, to the different states. And, you know, California is one of the leading ones on medical marijuana where they said that the employer does not have to, you know, respect the, the medical marijuana certificates. Um, but there's one state that, um, which is actually Ohio. So for my Ohio listeners out there, where they where, the, where, where a bill has been introduced to actually protect them, employers and give them even a higher protection and it has to do even with the recreational marijuana. Now, we don't have recreational marijuana yet uh, in California, but that's on the ballot. But I'll come back to that for a second. So as we know already, Colorado and some of the Washington, you know, they all passed this legalized marijuana and uh, it's already being challenged in Colorado by an employee who uses marijuana recreationally and uh, with recreational use. And now he lost his job and he's trying to sue. And the, the Court of Appeals in Colorado has told him, tough luck, buddy, you're out of luck because it's still a federally controlled substance. But Ohio, which I guess is one of the states toying around with getting this thing passed again, also decided that they were going to do an amendment to the bill regarding medical marijuana so that employers actually have higher protections. Now that is fantastic. And that's why I wanted to talk about this because this is a national program. Uh, and I think it's very pertinent uh, to an issue that's really on the rise. So basically this particular bill uh, is going to uh, significantly expand the rights of employers in regards to employees legally using marijuana. Now, is what this, this amendment is going to do, it would permit an employer to refuse to hire, discharge, discipline, or otherwise take an adverse action against the person with respect to hiring, tenure, terms, conditions, or privileges of employment because of that person's use, possession, or distribution of medical marijuana. And to me, I think that's great. So an employer has the right to refuse to hire them, or they can discharge them, or they can discipline them. And I think that's fantastic. And now remember, this is different from California. California is, is medicinal use only. Is what this amendment is doing at the same time that it's passing, you know, the, the, the legal the legal use to use marijuana. This bill is giving the employer some protection at the same time. So what I like about that is that if they turn around and and pass one bill, this goes through with it. So that, I think that's great. Now, it would also permit an employer to establish and enforce a drug testing policy, drug-free workplace uh, policy, or a zero-tolerance drug policy. So, I think that's fantastic. Now, we do have those in California, and uh, well, we have some other uh, states that uh, nationally that we have employers in that we have those policies in there too. Now, in addition, it would not interfere with any federal restrictions on employment including the regulations adopted by the United States Department of Transportation for drivers. So that's DOT, as it's more commonly uh, called. So it doesn't interfere with anything that DOT already has. All right. Now, it would, I'm talking about this bill. All right. So it would also permit a person from commencing a cause of action against an employer 
for refusing to hire, discharging, disciplining, discriminating, retaliating, or otherwise taking an adverse employment action against a person with respect to hiring them or terms and conditions, etc. I think that's that's fantastic. That means straight out the gate, they're being told that if your employer terminates you, you can't or, or refuses to hire you, you can't sue them. So I love it. All right, now. This bill also would not impact rebates or discounts on workers' compensation premiums to employers that participate in the drug workplace program. So basically, um, leave this out of the workers' comp arena in terms of getting any rebates or discounts as a result of a zero drug tolerance policy. It's not going to impact that. But what's interesting about it is that with workers' comp, if somebody has a work-related accident and the employer chooses uh, to uh, give them a drug test, or an alcohol test, whatever it may be, in the event of a work-related accident, this is still something that they can do. And at that point that they're testing positive, uh, it could impact their uh, the workers' comp benefits. Now, another point that's making clear is that is that the person who is discharged from employment because of that person's use of medical marijuana is ineligible for unemployment compensation. So now is what they're doing with this bill is also jumping into the unemployment insurance arena. So basically, if they're fired as a result of using medical marijuana even, they're adding it to the code in, in Ohio that in fact, um, that makes them automatically ineligible for uh, unemployment compensation. Now that's not unlike California, as an example, if they violate the the um, unemployment, excuse me, the uh, employer zero tolerance policy, just because they have medical marijuana certificates, they will in fact be denied unemployment already. So Ohio might be picking up on some of the aspects of um, what's already in place um, in some of the other states, and especially uh, California. Now, look, I said I'd come back to this thing with California. Now, look, let me tell you what's going on. Just for those of you who do not know. You know, the people that are smokers in California really are still trying to go after this business about having legalized marijuana in California. And so not just medicinal uh, marijuana use under the Marijuana Compassionate Act. They also are just pushing for legalized marijuana, just like some of these other states. So for recreational use. And I, I don't know, this is the second or third time there's been something on the ballot. So what I'm telling you now is that, yeah, in November... It's once again on the ballot in California regarding um, uh, giving the voters an opportunity to vote on marijuana. So, yes, once again, this is a little political on this, is that I'm not an advocate of the use of marijuana. Uh, I am one of these people that believes that sometimes it's a transition drug. You know, you start with marijuana and it, in fact, can, can lead to other things. Now, I know there's people out there, and look, and I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor in this area. I'm not a you know, researcher in this area. I'm just going by the things that we hear generally when we're watching the news about some of these things and how they come about. But basically is what they're looking at um, that on the, June, on the, on the uh, November ballot, they're pointing out certain things. Now, according to, according to their individuals that are pushing the, the, Cal, the California Cannabis Hemp Initiative, um, what they're talking about here is that it's going to permit the use the recreational use of marijuana by adults 21 and over yeah right 21 and over you're telling me that there's no child under or no no person under 21 that's not going to be smoking marijuana because the law says it's 21 and over that's not that doesn't have anything to do with anything you know but now i know why they put that in there because they're thinking that in fact that if they push it and say 21 and over they've got a better chance of probably getting it passed um, they are also saying that as a result of this and legalizing it, it's going to create jobs in medical cannabis and hemp industries. It eliminates taxation of medical cannabis. It prohibits excessive zoning requirements and fees on cannabis outlets. It restricts the use of cannabis seeds in California. It reconsiders, it reconsiders eliminates the practice of drug testing for past use. It reconsiders the elimination of the practice of drug testing for bad use. For, excuse me, for past use. That's ridiculous. So what you're telling me now is that they can't test somebody and that the person can say, well, I used it before, but I don't use it now. My understanding, and I could be wrong, is that it only stays in your system for about 30 days anyway. Now listen to this. It also mandates state um, 
establish guidelines similar to those for beer and wine and alcohol. It also allows release of prisoners currently incarcerated for non-violent marijuana offenses. Eh, I'm kind of on the fence with that one. I can go either way with that issue. And then it removes cannabis from the California Schedule uh, Schedule 1 of Controlled Substances Act. So what does that mean? That means no longer would that be on all right, the Controlled Substances uh, of California. Which remember, even though it removes it from that, it's still a, it's still a federally controlled substance. All right, so you can, you can remove it from California all you want. It's still going to be an illegal substance from a federal standpoint. It also allows for personal use and caps the retail sales excise tax at 10%. So, so they can't be taxed by more than 10% by those who are going to be selling it. Now, they say that California is the largest political unit in the USA and the eighth largest global economy and can show the way to the future of decriminalizing the ultimate sustainable domestic resource of cannabis. I, you know, So these guys are really pushing for this because they think that if they get it pushed, it's going to be, it's going to, you know, California will then be paving the way uh, throughout the rest of the world, I guess is what they, they're trying to point across there on their, on their website. So the California Hemp Act of 2016, is more uh, commonly known as, is going to create funding for cannabis research and for the development of new cannabis industries, creating quote unquote millions of jobs with a new truly green economy with valuations potentially in the trillions of dollars. You see what they're trying to do with this? They're trying to they're trying to spark people to do this because they, they feel it's gonna get people back into the job market. This is ridiculous. So is this a little bit political again? Yes, it is. I'm urging my listeners not to vote. Okay, on the um, on the hemp initiative regarding legalizing marijuana. All right, with that last comment, it's time to close out this segment. But let me remind you that you can also hear us uh, on Facebook at Listen Up and subscribe to us on iTunes. Just search for Listen Up with Jim Potts. And as a reminder, we take calls every third Friday. We can be reached at 855-4J-POTS or 855-457-6887. Just give us a call between 9.45 and about 10.45, 11 o'clock, and, uh, and we'll be able to discuss uh, whatever your question is. Or you can email us at listenup with jameswilliampottsllc.com. Okay, I'm Jim Potts. I will continue to fight the fight, and thanks for listening. Thank you for being a part of Listen Up with Jim Potts. We take your calls every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for your questions and concerns. Call us at 1-855-4-J-POTTS. That's 1-855-4-J-POTS. Again, that's every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at 1-855-4-J-POTS. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on iTunes, and link up with us on LinkedIn. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Until next time, make it a great week.